Hello everybody, welcome back to Latino Vision. I have a very good show for you today. Uh, but before I start, I need everybody to remember that this is my opinion. Only I'm only expressing how I feel and what I think. Don't take none nothing of what you hear here in this video personal. I'm just expressing my opinion. I mean it won't be nothing bad, right? So just enjoy the ride. Some people say I'm colorblind. And sometimes I wish I was. All throughout my life, uh, my family raised me, and all the Latino people, I guess, that lived around me raised me to um, hate. Uh, white people and black people well not so much as hate but fear or beware of them and something happened when I was very young that really opened my eyes to that and that was my dad and a couple of his friends were outside um, out in the street just saying goodbye in their cars and uh, three black guys came up pulled out a gun took their money um, one of them punched my dad with some brass knuckles cut his eye open and began shooting as they left Luckily, nobody got hit. Um, but at that point, I was very young. I was about eight years old. And at that point, I thought, you know, black people, they're, they're the worst people on the planet. I thought to myself that I would hate them forever. You could say. But now that I'm grown and situations uh, push me towards uh, certain routes in my life um, it's crazy but the more I knew the more I, people I met um, the more I learned I found out that has nothing to do with your color. As a matter of fact, I lived with a black guy for about a year or two, and we became very close friends. And people used to always ask me, you know, how can you live with him? You know, you live with that black guy? They used to always tell me, you know, and I used to think, you know, I never, I, I didn't even remember he was black anymore since we were such close friends. I couldn't even see the color. He wasn't black to me. He was just my roommate, my friend. Um, so that changed the whole lot, you know? So they're not all that way. And, you know, I grew up around black people, so, you know, that wasn't very strange to me because, you know, that's... That's what I saw growing up, just, you know, black people and Latino people. When I got into the workforce, and it wasn't about what color you were, it's about how good you are in business, how good you are in your labor, fast, slow, smart, stupid, you know. It all depends on how smart you are, is how far you're going to get. That's when I met white people. The real white people. You know, the everyday Joe. Mm. It's crazy because I was afraid of them at first. I didn't want to talk to them at first. 
But then I met this guy. Uh, I'm gonna say his first name. Hopefully he won't get mad. I didn't ask him. His name is Mike. Very good friend of mine. At least I consider him a very good friend. This man uh, takes me out on his boat, takes me fishing and stuff. You know, I enjoy spending time with him. And when I knew that uh, all these things that they taught me as I was growing up weren't true, was at that point. I had bought this beat up bucket and it, it messed up somewhere in the hood. You know, it just broke down on my way home. And I was caught in the middle of the hood with nothing but a cell phone with a little bit of battery left on. You know, a couple of bucks in my pocket. And, you know, black people started coming up to me and talking to me, you know, and I would talk to them. And uh, it was these two bums that came up and tried to help me start the car again. It never worked, you know. So what else could we do? So I spoke to them for a while. They let me put my car in their lot and bought them a beer. And we're sitting out there drinking So my friend came to pick me up. But uh, I asked my friend Mike. He would help me bring my car in he said yes right away he said yes he came down you know with the pulley thing for the car and we went down to the hood and pick it up he knew where we were going because his job requires him to uh, go everywhere in the city so he knew we were going to the hood so when we got there you know and he stops the truck and uh, he reaches in the center part of his truck and he pulls out his two guns he's loading them up he straps up and everything, right? He's ready to go. And he starts playing. He's like, Jose, oh, hey, look, check it out, man. You're going to go push the car into the thing, you know, and I'll, and I'll back up the truck. He's putting this whole plan. And I tell him, look, Mike, please don't shoot anybody out here, right? Before you shoot, you know, wait till they reach to their pocket or something, all right? But don't just start shooting. And uh, we get the car on and, you know, we take off. Nothing happened, you know. Thank God. But, um... That is that that is what I mean by you know I'm colorblind because I don't see Mike as a white person. I forget that he's white. I don't know if you could understand what I'm saying. I don't see a color. I mean now you have you know, all these races mixing. You know soon enough we won't know who 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 and what what you know. So why not? Why not change the way we see ourselves? Just stop calling each other, you know, colors. I, you know, what you want to know one thing that'll help the world at the time, that'll really, really help the world, is if everybody was colorblind. Then we wouldn't be so separated from each other because of color. We would be just human all are human regardless of your color